And here we go. Today in a perfect world program on the reallibertymedia.com. And I'm still Flash, and we're still doing the same old thing as we always do. But I'm not sure if anybody's going to call in. It's Christmas Day, 2018. If you need a date for that, ah, give up. <laughs> anyway, I'm starting out my my evening badly because I was supposed to change the speaker setting, and I didn't write down how to change the speaker setting. So now I have to go through port poor Grim put him through that stuff again because uh, when it comes to the tech stuff on the computer <laughs> leave it to Vinny <laughs> Vinny does better than I do so anyway tonight is Christmas Christmas Day it's been very quiet I was uh, got to go to the store today and go pick up a few things because there's a one, one grocery store chain that does not close on holidays and Everybody else is shut down, but the the Seven Eleven. What is it? I think it's a Seven Eleven at some kind of gas station, and uh, and this one store. But they still close at eight. It's not like they stay open any different hours. They just open on the day. There, nobody else does. Hmm. So I guess some people, uh, like myself, overlook traditions. Uh, and don't have a problem with going out and getting milk on Christmas Day. Like it, I'm sure to some people it's supposed to be special and, and all that, but I don't know. Just another day on the calendar to me in a, in a perfect world. I, I don't think that I need a reason, according to society, to go to the somewhere and bring my wife back a, a little trinket from my shopping adventure, you know. So I've just kind of made that part of the relationship. You know, when I go to the grocery or go out to go on a journey to, to find a product or a thing, I might just off the wall go, hey, she might like that. And the Christmas thing, I don't know. It it doesn't mean anything to me as a uh, as a person. I mean, I, I think people get along a little better, but then it's called... It's a lot harder to rob somebody with mittens on. <laughs> you know, um, so, I don't know. Uh, what do you say about any of that anyway? I haven't seen crime in so many years. I, if it wasn't for the internet, I'd think the world was cool. Nice, easy place to live in. If it wasn't for the outside interference into the daily life, you'd never know any, any problems anywhere exist if in fact you were in a place like this like where Grimm's at or you know Rob works even Rob works he seems to get along with his his neighbors good enough to not have a shootout and you know argue about property rights and shit like that so now he might do it on the RLM trying to tell somebody hey look there's a, a way to deal with these people and like myself he's not always the nicest about it but you know, if you want nice, go to the cops. They'll give you plenty of nice. Ask Grim about how much nice the cops will give you. <laughs> Just don't take your dog, because they'll probably shoot him. Mm. Mm. And I'm sipping elixir live on the radio as a Christmas Grinch. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna do a a little something, but I don't I don't have any great. Christmas tales to tell, you know, shit like that. They've all blended into each other, far as I, I can remember. It's it's an X on the on the calendar after it's over, and usually there's just a lot of cleaning up to do and work because you know, food and entertaining people and whatever spillage there may or may not have been from the drinking crowd. Because I got a lot of good stories about just life, people doing shit, but holiday stories. Wow, that must be a, that's a product of your workforce, I think. Your uh, nine to five, five days a week con job. Because if you buy into all that shit, well, hmm. there's a, there's a, a couple of political parties that you can vote into power and... <laughs> They'll take care of you. 
you know what kind of shit they do, right? If it ain't poisoned or broken, you're not touching it. <laughs> that's that's the kind of life that society offers. You know? The toaster that lasts for six months or a year, and it's made out of crap, so it's not going to last very long any damn way. Be glad it works. <laughs> and then get another one. They're cheap. But, hey, that's what Christmas should have been for. You know, to help somebody that's too lazy to get their own shit. Because there's a lot of people like that. I'm like that. I didn't used to be that way. But now, I'm <laughs> definitely, fuck the money chasing shit. It's a drag. And it, not, okay, that's unfair. It's not that the chasing is a drag. It's at this age in life, I don't want to do it anymore. And I had to have somebody else point that out to me. I didn't come up with the idea all by myself, I'll tell you. But uh, being me has always just got me through life. Whatever the hell get me through life means. I think waking up in the morning is getting through life. Then you deal with your day. (laughs) And some days aren't Christmas. And some days... I've had Christmas in July, if if you're talking about presents from people that I cared about you know but the holidays I don't I don't I don't see them as a loot grabbing experience I wasn't raised to uh, to understand things the way other kids were I don't think I don't think my folks put a lot of importance on how I interpreted shit they kind of let me do the judging from a real early age because they taught me how to do it. <laughs> and I'm using the word judging in the sense of like, if you don't close your eyes and willy-nilly walk across the freaking road and hope you don't get hit by a car. No. You got to look both ways and make sure nobody's going to run you over. Shit like that. It's called judging the you know your surroundings. And I think some of us are capable of taking it to levels of maybe not reality but judgment that other people don't they don't see it you know like i share a certain perspective let's say about the government scotus the police fiat currency israel you know all the synthetics that there are to point out they've been pointed out monsanto's now bear whoop whoop you know, enjoy your GMO fucking food. You're going to get it anyway. You can't hide from these thieves. And you can't get enough people to not spend their money supporting them. So hmm. we're kind of in a catch-22 at the time, I think. Now, I'd like to believe something's brewing in, in, the, in society and people are realizing that the seats of power are, they're a theater. There's nothing, nothing about them regarding us is got any real, real value to it. It's just a bunch of other people telling these people what to do and say. Because they say one thing and we end up with fluoride in the water. Now, I know I harp on this all the time, but for the one guy that's out there that may not know, Hey, fluoride comes in two varieties. One is a natural byproduct of nature, and the other one is a waste product from a chemical plant. <laughs> and that's what they that's what their source of fluoride is to give us for our teeth. And so the girls have nice makeup to put on their face. And over a period of many years, this shit works on us. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm a firm believer of it because, one, I'm 59, and two, I don't feel crotchety and uh, mm, feeble, I think would be a good way. I don't feel all that. I think I just walk, get my bag, and go down to the grocery and do my little shit, and I pack my bag up and walk home. And I don't feel any different now than I did, mm, I don't know, say 20 years ago. Let's not get too crazy about it. But I'm functioning as good as any 40-year-old out there, if you want to put numbers and comparison to it. But my mind, geez, my mind is still 
probably 10, 12 years old. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. I looked around at people and, and they all cared about everything. And everything worried them. And this was going to happen. And that was going to happen. And hey, Moose. Oh, I forgot to say hi to my favorite folks in the uh, electronic world at the Real Liberty Media. Because I didn't expect nobody to be paying attention on Christmas. I just figured I'd keep my... Um, <laughs> I like doing the radio, so I keep my show going, whether anybody else is out there or not. <laughs> kind of like Vinny, only completely insane, you know. And uh, The wife didn't come up with a topic for me tonight. She offered, but... I went, nah, I think I'm just going to make it up as I go and see what happens. Well, uh, Moose, age is it's relative to the person that's looking at it, not the person that's doing it. Because I've seen some young people that act like old fogies, and I've seen some old fogies that, that act like a young people. So, there's... There's no one size fits all, even for the complaint department. Even the weirdos to us, they have a uniqueness about them. There's not a group of them. <laughs> I won't name him this time on the Christmas. I'll give him a break today. I know he's not here. He's probably, you know, polishing some bunions or something. Anyway, enough about my worthy adversary <laughs> on Christmas Day. <laughs> and, uh,. Oh yeah, and uh, the update is Moose got herself a new dog a couple of weeks back, and the dog is training her. Everything is right on schedule. She gives the dog treats, and he does what she tells him. And see, the dog thinks that he's in charge, and we think we're in charge. And the dog just wants the treat, but let's you know overanalyze everything. <laughs> In a perfect world, we tend to we tend to do these things. But I had a job once where I worked for this fellow, and he would tell me profound things, uh, things that at the time when I was in my twenties I didn't think much of them. But now that I'm older and I I've had reflection, you know, and, and where it's come in handy. And I remember Don looks over at me from the job and he says, "You know what? If it has your attention, it requires your attention." And then he went back to work and he just let me stew in that thought for a while. <laughs> and I don't think I stewed in it, but it stuck. I remembered he said it. I remember where I was when he said it. And I think over the years I've seen that, you know, if something doesn't interest me, fuck it. I ain't going to do it. What for? Oh, and I F-bombed Christmas. Sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to do that. Anyway, so back to my point, I guess, so. Uh, before I sabotage, <laughs> sabotage Christmas. Anyway, words, uh, words are the problem to uh, all of everything. If it wasn't for words, think about how wonderful life would be if we didn't have to communicate with each other. <laughs> There's a Christmas present for you. Just imagine if the only thing you could do to get along with other people was smile and wave at them. And that was it. Words? Nah, nobody could talk. <laughs> There's in a perfect world. We'd abolish the point. You wouldn't even need to. Just think things. And as Rob has showed us with the brainwaves, why, we'd all function properly. <laughs> I'll be, I wonder if we got the right form of energy and it was delivered on that 54 hertz. I wonder if the results wouldn't change how the body and the mind work. I think it would. Yeah, now Grimner's posting stuff on the reallibertymedia.com chat room. And let's open it up and get a giggle. Because Moose laughed. So let's see what cleverness is under the Grimner's thumb. And he says, and I quote, You know what this tired mom and her sleeping newborn could use right now? A drum solo. <laughs> Little drummer boy. <laughs> Yeah, every drummer's dream. Because, <coughs> yeah, when when I was in the States, I could afford hobbies of that nature. And now I'm a little bit more conservative. And uh, if the whim strikes me to get a drum kit, I can't just go out and, eh, I think I'll just do that. You know, I've got somebody else in life to think about. And uh, uh, it's kind of slowed me down in a, 
I think you think that slowed me down. I think it does, because uh, it takes time to process a thought now, <laughs> and I, so I can stretch things out for fucking years if I want to, you know. And uh, I don't. I don't think I spend a lot of time concerned with the reality of the misfortune of our social groupings, you know. I make the best of what is out there, what, you know, the physical out there. When you go out there and you see people and you got to give them your money and get shit and carry stuff and bump into them and all that other crap, the, there's two ways to deal with that. And I found that hmm, the getting along part isn't as dip Well, when you're older, of course, you, you see things differently. But when I was young, I wasn't very concerned about how other people felt. I don't really think I thought about it. But I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, walking in a room and then, you know, uh, throwing grape juice on the curtains. You know, it wasn't like I was into shocking anyone. But because I'm so little, I always got a lot of attention. <laughs> you would think it would go the other way in the big people. But I told this story on the dark table once. I was in my young 20s, 22, 23. And I hung out in this bar. There was a fellow about six foot three, maybe two sixty, in that range. Big, huge fucking guy. And he was even belly ridden. He had a little bit of a paunch. And and uh, one day he wanted me and him to go do something. And he's wearing a bright red Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I mean, he looked like an advertisement for Christmas. You know, like a Christmas deck or Hawaiian, well, Hawaiian thing, Christmas, same thing, that bright red, look at me. And I was, uh, I was in a pair of jeans and a, you know, like a zebra striped, black and white striped shirt. And he looks at me, he says, you know, can you do something about the clothes? You're going to attract a lot of attention to us. <laughs> and to this day, I mean, I come up to his nipple. <laughs> He's a huge guy, and he's and he's worried about how much attention I'm going to draw to the two of us being together in in this social setting. And it's funny how we all look on the other guy as he's the problem. That's that's what that meant. There was nothing wrong with Daryl. Daryl was just average Joe <laughs> to Daryl. He didn't realize he was Daryl the giant. You know, some giants know they're giants. I had another buddy, Steve Matthews. He knew he knew that his power was something he had to constantly be aware of, or he could hurt people. And the way he coped with that was he drank vodka all the time, <laughs> and it made him pass out instead of violent. So he was unpredictable and uh, undependable. But he wasn't dangerous. So, mm, what a trade-off, you know, to have to put yourself in a coma so that you wouldn't attack everybody and beat them all up is that's what people had said and the night that i met him i'd seen him coming around i'd moved into this neighborhood and it got friendly down at the one of the local watering holes there was six of them total but this one particular place is where the most uh, popular bartender worked and some other members of the local society Anyway, why did I bring that up for? Um, I don't know, just times in my life that kind of flash when I'm doing the radio. And I was thinking about living when I was living in, in the city and Steve. And he was such a big guy. And he would just drink vodka, uh, what was that, vodka gimlets. And always a bitch about, oh, you've bruised my, my vodka with too much gimlet. <laughs> and sleep. So he wouldn't fight with people. Anyway, that was his way of coping with it. Now, I never had a problem like that. That that would be a... Uh, oh, I was getting to how we met. I'd heard about the guy. I'd seen him. I've avoided him because everybody said, yeah, he's beat everybody up at least once. <laughs> and some of us at, a couple at a time. So I end up one night and he sits down and right next to me at the bar. And I'm looking at everything trying to hope he just ignores me and all of a sudden Steve Matthews wants to talk to me about something and I'm getting drunk so okay I'm I'm game now <laughs> and we're chitter chatter and back and forth for a while and we finally we hit the argument 
and he grabs me by the, the jacket because it's San Francisco and it's cold in the summer, it's cold in the winter, and the bartender always had the fucking front door open, even with a gas fireplace in the place cooking, she'd still have the front door open. So I never took my coat off in there. Anyway, he grabs me up off the stool and I had this vision of him putting me in a hospital. So I thought, well, let's think fast here. And I said, what are you going to do, Steve? Beat me up and show everybody how tough you are. And lucky I was. He put me back down on the stool and he says, yeah, you're right. He goes, yeah, I don't want to do that. And we ended up becoming friends. But that wasn't what I thought when I smart asked him. I had visions of 911 and hospital stay, but he, he had mercy. Anyway, so in it to go on with Steve, he was the kind of guy that he was so lazy about taking tools off the truck, he would just pick me up at the waist and pick, if we had a second floor to look at, and, hey, look, tell me what whatever the problem he was looking for, identify it for him. And <laughs> people would look at it as kind of funny. Or we'd go to restaurants to eat and they'd, he would order two plates and the girl would start to walk away and I'd say, well, what about me? Don't I get to eat too? Well, he just ordered. Yeah, for him. Oh my God. <laughs> and the man would sit there and polish off two plates of food before I was done with mine. It was, it was an odd couple uh, kind of uh, partnership. He, we did remodels in uh, <laughs> all kinds of shit from plumbing to framing. It was insane. Dry. We even did a little drywall, but <laughs> anyway, me and Steve had a lot of fun working. And for I guess for some reason I I must have spent some time at a Christmas because with him and his he had a wife and two kids, and his family was uh, they were in, as insane as Steve was, but quietly it wasn't a, a loud you know chaotic insanity it it was things like this i i went home with him for dinner after a job one night and he, his wife linda and their two kids sarah the little one and the older one i can't remember her name but little sarah and little sarah's eating her dinner and I, the, the grown-ups are chitter chattering and out absolutely nowhere she says mom why, why do mans have tails? Because what happened is she'd walked in on her father in the, in the taking a shower that day. And <laughs> I guess that was the question that the child had <laughs> at the dinner table with, you know, me and, and the family. So these are, I don't know, I don't know if they're average and ordinary or if they're bizarre, but Whenever I've been around people at the holidays and their kids, most of the times the, the kids are the funny ones. You know, they say the damnedest things. I remember a child once that came home from school. It was my uh, second wife's child. And she stands at the doorway just mad as shit. You could see it in her face. She wasn't yelling and screaming and tantruming. She just had this look like when you make a scowly face and so she was obviously trying to get one of the adults to ask honey what's wrong and then luckily for me i did <laughs> and the seven-year-old girl looks at me and says lou those girls at school are smoking pots and i don't even know what that means <laughs> so here i am stepfathering this kid and I'm a full-blown pothead. Everybody in my adult life, there's no secret. But we don't teach the children what the adults, you know, you keep some things from your kids. When they're seven years old, they don't need to know shit. And as a result of my great mental thinking, it seemed to work. And uh, I was a smoker and all the kids, well, oh, keep those nasty cigarettes away from me. Because I didn't, hey, you want a cigarette? And they go, no, and you remember you said that. Because if you change your mind, I'm going to be there watching. <laughs> Just, you know, little, um, to me, little smart-ass comments to kids that they knew I was playing with them. Because I was always threatening to do something I never did. Mm. But not violence. It, I'll give you an example. <laughs> I had four kids to watch 
while my uh, partner was away at night working. And I had to come up with creative ways to keep four kids occupied. They, they were all, of course, of different ages. So I would yell from the living room, I need a slave. And I'm telling you, they never knew if it was going to be go outside and um, clean the garbage off the driveway to ice cream for everybody. So <laughs> they'd all be, you'd hear them running down the hall trying to get their first and all that kind of crap. And, uh, well, apparently the way that I handle children is not much different than the way I speak on a radio. And at the time in my life, it was enough for the state to get involved and uh, break up the marriage over, uh, what did they say that was called? Um, I was non-compliant with all their investigation and all this kind of shit. So they, they bullied the wife behind my back and said, well... You lose lose that idiot, or we're going to take the kids. <laughs> and, and she went along. You know, she went with the shit. They're going to take the kids. You got to go. So I did. And that, to me, was like, wait a minute. You're going to side with the state <laughs> against me now over the way I, I talk to people. And that was it. That to, In a nutshell, it wasn't about these kids were clean and closed and homeworked and all that crap. And you can tell by me, I'm no dummy. So I had a little hand in teaching the, the youngest of the four on how to read and write very, very early. And then the three older siblings to, you know, to keep working with her because they wanted her to catch up to them. It was great, you know, but. The state didn't like it, and I, the state's job was to find some way to break up the family in uh, those kind of situations. Well, I got involved in the school's business one, and it pissed somebody off. And what happened was, hmm, got three little blind-haired kids, boy and two girls, going to public school. And the public school, they kept they got lice in their hair from the other kids, so they bring this shit home, and we have to do all this crap to the house and the kids and this that and the other and I went oh no 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 so I called up the school and I did a little checking on what lice were and how they survived on the freaking buses without anybody on them on an inanimate object they jump they this they that the other thing but the black kids don't get them <laughs> so it was only a white people problem anyway so I talked to these uh what's his name this principal guy and I told him, I'm going to keep the kids out of school until you straighten all this shit out. And, you know, don't be having me arrested for keeping the kids out of school. Can we agree on that? And he said, yeah. And in a couple of days, I had the news people down at my apartment interview me for the news because I wasn't sending the kids to school. And now they want, uh, the city wanted to press some kind of charges on me or something. So anyway... My lack of uh, coordination with the system, you know, because I wouldn't do what they wanted the way they wanted it done, that I had the, you know, the nerve to insist that they listen to me. <laughs> well, they showed me who was going get, to get their way, and it wasn't me. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reasons that people, you know, have the emotional feelings they have about the system now i didn't you know i didn't expose much i told you a little bit about my second marriage um hmm. i'm not real good at keeping a marriage going because the whole point of marriage in the first place is that you you get together and you bond your freaking straw man and you get the state involved You do. You promised you wouldn't do that. Anyway, in America, where I am from, you wife over there, <laughs> that's, she's jibber jabbering in my ear because I'm alone on the on in a perfect world program. Oh, I never said hi to everybody. I think I'm just gonna load my pipe and say hi to the people that are on the list. But I didn't expect no one to be on on the RLM to hanging around on Christmas Day. I figured they'd be all off with their lovey-doveys, rubbing bunions and such. But we got Barman, Grimner, 
Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chloe, Chalcedony, oh, hey, Circle, Chloe again, me, J Dread, Poxified, Poxphone, Rain, RLM, Fluke, Rums, Vinny. Vinny took off. He said he had something going on. Uh, the Phantom, Beatles, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jay's Nines, Jay's Kozu, Nensen, Dubois, Poxahome, Ponsa, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. But I think people out are just logged on right now and they're probably eating or playing with their new toys. I wasn't real big this year about uh, wanting stuff. And strangely enough, the mother-in-law and the sister-in-law and, you know, the people affiliated, they still got me gifts, you know. And uh, I thought, wow. And everybody knows I don't celebrate Christmas. They're all cool. They come over here to do it, and I'm here, and I, I don't have a problem with anything. I'm just not a, I'm not a Christmassy kind of guy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but... It's nice to um, it's nice to be shown that people care and all that, but I don't. What I don't like is is the Christmas thing, where I'm from is all commercialized and it's not the same. I think this these people are, if they give you something, it's because they they want to. It's not out of um, that guilt that christmas guilt that you feel if you're you know married to somebody's daughter and now they're your mother-in-law <coughs> or your sister-in-law or your nephew or whatever the job is on their end but you know hmm. it was just amazing to me how different the cultures are on a personal level you know out there in the great big denmark that could be a whole fucking other game i don't know i think water seeks its own level uh, and me and Cirque, as different uh, as we are in, in a lot of ways, that at some point, me and her are just, we're floating along on this thing, just watching the same movie at times. It's not always the same. We have our moments of disagreement, like uh, about the earth. Oh, I love to watch her roll her eyes when I go, well, I just don't know. <laughs> and that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it is round. It's not round. I don't even care if it is or not. All I'm telling her or anybody else that hears it is from my perspective, I don't know. It, it could be it could be something else. How do you prove it? There you, <laughs> Ah, there's a good topic. I feel like talking about proof for no particular reason. After I bored you to death with parental skills 101, now we're going to go to or wait, what would be a good topic? No, proof is a good topic, I think. Not grape juice on the curtains. Well, <laughs> can you imagine somebody that was so careless with what they're holding that they would throw it around and get it on your drapes? <laughs> I know people that are like that. I've met people, encountered them. And the one time, you know, I did say on the, a couple of weeks ago that I didn't ever experience a glutton in my life on a personal level. I was wrong, Steve Matthews, because, yeah, when I look back, but it's a discussion that we're not going to have on the radio, but I'm going to at least say, yeah, I was wrong, Steve was a pig. That man would do everything there was to do and look for more until he, he was passed out. So, yeah, he was a terrible person to party with, but he was a very skilled freaking uh, carpenter. <laughs> He was brilliant. He could figure out how to fix plumbing problems. And, and he knew how to weld and how to use torches to just get the shit just hot enough and this, that, and the other. But after after his responsibility to that was finished, and then he was a danger to everybody. <laughs> now, me, I've never been thought of as dangerous. I'm too little to be thought of as dangerous. Maybe one-on-one, -on -one, because I can... I can hold my own in an argument or a disagreement, I think. But what proof is there of it? You know, you got me telling you something that may or may not have happened, and these may or may not be the results of what happened. I could just be talking shit on the radio. But, on the other hand... <laughs> so, what 
what does the idea of proof even mean? You know, I think to me, when I feel something has been proven, all that really means is I like the answer. Other than that, what the hell is proof? I saw it with my own two eyes. Okay, well, I can find four books that can prove in quantum physics and shit like that 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 doesn't even exist. <laughs> You just believe it does. And goes to uh, Rob Works and his brainwaves. There is so much so much more to the, the life that we live than we're ever exposed to. I mean, the, the, the electronic world is, it, it happens so quick, right? Blink, blink, and you're, you're doing all these things. I'm talking to Moose in Wisconsin and... Chloe in Kentucky and Grimner's in New Mexico and blink blink and we're doing all this shit. Well, I think that the synthetic world, you know, with the proof they have that there is shit that goes on in electronic, you know, the electronic whatever you can see or what have you, that they pretend to do other shit that they really don't do and they bullshit us with the reality of, well, you can see this, but you really don't understand what you're seeing. That's a little too technical for most of the people that use it. Grimm understands it because he writes the code. This is the way I see it. Now, me, not so much, because to me it's like a TV set. Boom, turn it on, turn it off. So my proof is way different than his. And we're still looking at the exact same thing and with the exact same information available and I choose not to look as far as Grimm did with the coding. Doesn't uh, I don't know if I'd be good at it or not, but it doesn't really strike my interest bone. I'm not that technically minded. I think I'm more simple or maybe subjective. I like to go with how I feel about shit. <laughs> Sometimes more than the way I look at something and see it, because I don't know, man. You know, you can... Take Hannah out into the mud and get her all, you know, muddy and slappy. And she doesn't look like, uh, it's not so pretty. You know, hose her down and clean her off and give her a nice brush. And then you got a pretty dog. So, it's the same dog. <laughs> and you're just looking at it at two different moments. So, I, I think that the way that we're taught to interpret information in the first place somehow it's been messed with in ways that we're taught to not understand some some things and we're also on the other hand we're taught to understand other things that aren't even real like the she's the mm, what do you call it the medical system your rockefeller medicine i we didn't lose it i was trying to find another way to identify it and i couldn't because uh Something about saying that name Rockefeller usually makes people's skin crawl, and they don't really understand why. They think, oh, look what the other good they've done. No, there's just as much knowledge about how much bad they've done. All these, like, that, what's that shit called? Gardasil, Cirque? That, yeah, for girls. That's a, that's a three-step um, program to completely cripple your, your whole female line. That, that's not medicine. That's junk. And if you don't believe me, look at the ingredients that go into it. And they want to put this crap in your kids. And when you fight them, <laughs> you get what I got. You get your ass handed to you on a plate. Unless you have a lot of money and you can afford the years in court that it takes to go to SCOTUS. Because what you'll find out, fighting the state doesn't go anywhere. The, the federal trumpet. <laughs> You're welcome, Trump. Um, so you're you're caught in this catch twenty two because you have this this reality everybody else believes, and then you have the reality that really exists that people don't believe is real. And here we are; we've got proof of it. They make fucking TV shows about men in prison <laughs> for thirty years for a murder they never committed, but at the time. All the right people were bribed and all the right people were threatened and this went the, this guy's way. <laughs> so, you know, proof. Proof of what? You got, Mike said it the best, your side, their side, and what really happened. And we're all going to all think it's different. And we're in this 
joint illusion where we all know we're different, but we're all supposed to act the same. <laughs> How the hell do you do that? Oh, well, you take the magic Christmas pill on Christmas Day, and for that day, you're not a prick to everybody. <laughs> Got it? We, we won. And the bankers get the other 363 days to just destroy us, I think. But, you know, that's not a very uh, popular opinion of the financial system. Maybe on the reallibertymedia.com chat it is. I think more people on the RLM know the truth than don't. And the hangers-on that are still playing the social game and doing all the things they have to do because that it's... It's either conform or be cast out. <laughs> cast out is a, I like it. I don't. I would recommend cast out to anybody. If you've never been cast out, go get yourself cast out. Start with Facebook. Facebook is a good place to practice being shunned by society, because when society shuns you for that first time, you're going to really understand that. Hey. They don't like anything that works right. <laughs> what do you call it? It's like a, an acquired taste. You know, people will say, well, yeah, I tried calamari and, oh, I thought it was disgusting. But over the years, yeah, sure. You know, I guess if you lick a pair of sweaty socks every morning after 10 years of it, you'll probably be used to it. <laughs> it wouldn't bother you a bit, but <laughs> that's my opinion. But there are people that swear by this <laughs> squid, in case you didn't know. And then, uh, I used to make jokes about it. They've even made jokes about it on television. Even TV shows about making jokes about it. I think, uh, what was it? <laughs> what was that dumb show I watched with the Crypt Keeper? Uh, anyway, Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> they even did a Steve Reeves before he got crippled. He did this one where he's a restaurant owner and he's got the squid restaurant. Yeah. They turn it into a, a carnivorous place where you eat other people. But still, squid. What a taste sensation. Anyway, so maybe we're going to do, do a one-hour Christmas and get out of here early this time. Uh, don't really have much going. Denmark is so peaceful and and quiet. There's nothing exciting to report. No shootings, no rapings, no stabbings. Uh, hmm. I don't know. What newsworthy things happen here? Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> uh, they save that stuff for Copenhagen. Copenhagen, you can have a whole lot of fun down there, though. Hell, even the Stones were there, what, two months ago or so. They came to town to do a show, and then they did their big bike ride into the uh, free town and but you know they got armed guards and <laughs> shit like that because they're all bazillionaires even hey mick's even a knight at that sir mick fuck and his name is philip anyway mick fucking queen of england made a knight out of him i wonder what that means i guess it's really just all commerce it's about how much money you've managed to bring into their little um game to finance their wars to make all the mess that we have today yeah well merry christmas to everybody that doesn't live in a mess you know if you got the the peace in the quiet maybe you ought to appreciate that i do i'm not telling you that you don't i'm just saying some people on the real liberty media.com chat i won't name them they know who they are <laughs> Um, one day a year ain't enough, bucko, you know, why don't you, why don't you not be an asshole the other 360 some days a year, and let, let's see how that goes, but, you know, that's my Christmas dream, <laughs> the Jew wants the impossible for Christmas, <laughs> but that's okay, because that's the whole point of living for me, is you gotta want something, but the things that we're encouraged to want are the opposite of anything that's got a value <laughs> to me some people hold value in, in currency or property or slaves or 
whatever you know surroundings they've got you know these toys are all mine i'm a rich wealthy miser wow look at me dig me i'm cool um i don't know i try not to do that i don't overdo anything well maybe the radio i may be a little bit more boisterous because i I'm, in person i would have to know you very well to do crazy voices and act like a nut job ah he Grimner's still posting stuff and I'm gonna open it up it's on minds.com and what does he have in store for us now the Chinese rest association of the United States I think it's restaurant association would like to extend our thanks to the Jewish people we do not completely understand your dietary customs but we are proud and grateful that your God insists you eat our food on Christmas. <laughs> what? Yeah, there's another. Oh, see, it's all this religious mumbo jumbo. You know, not not there. There isn't a God to all you religious people. I just, uh, I just don't think that we need to have other people explain to us what it is. You either got it or you don't, and that. Uh, that's not a popular opinion either. And it kind of cuts out the old G's on Christmas, if you know what I'm talking about there, people. But it's not really important. You know, what's important is how you interact in real life. You know, your your personal opinion about a, a money-grubbing holiday, please. Uh, I don't think I'm any meaner today than I was any other day of the year. Same old, same old, ho, 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 or no, ho, ho, ho. But in a perfect world, I think what I was thinking is we wouldn't require, you know, the organization to dictate what days are this and what days are that. There has got to be a more natural way to look at the seasons and the days and the times and through you know dead presidents and made up holidays about crap <laughs> Be, you know it, the the life you got here is supposed to be uh, secondary according to religious people and now nah, this is the one I'm doing so I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention to the one I've got I have now you know the one I'm in at the moment and then I'll take the necessary steps to go wherever I go from here I would I would assume I don't I don't verbally argue with other people about the topic so I really don't know what they all have to say in detail but their argument according to what I I understand of it through the uh, the MSM and school and uh, I don't know just ordinary folk that claim to, to believe but obviously don't um, I think it's messed up. <laughs> I, I don't know, but being maybe it's being it's uh, considered such a part of a such a big group, you know, seven billion people. The number is uh, frightening. Jeez, seven billion of us. Wow. Wonder where that's gonna go. <laughs> don't worry about it. The USA is knocking that number down a little here and a little there, right along with France. The United Kingdom, Denmark, Poland, Russia, China, on and on and on. Well, all I mean is everybody's in it together. And if you're not in it, then you're obviously like me. And people, they have their opinions based on their proof and their knowledge. Well, okay, but you know, even today, I'm sure there's bombs falling somewhere. Some bankers figuring out what the next shortage is going to yield and how much money to divert into this from that. And the game goes on, and it goes on in trillions of dollars, right? Five trillion dollars a day is what these fucking top five banks claim they trade daily. And here we are, okay, on our little incomes, whatever that may be. And it's so big that it, it it's beyond understanding it but it doesn't get anybody to say no enough's enough yeah i say enough's enough all the time 
but that's because I withdrew out of the game. I stopped playing completely. No game out of me. The only game I have left is my opinions about shit on the radio. And uh, what else would I... My interactions are all clean. I'm always nice to people, and they're always nice back. So, well... So, my Christmas gift was... Uh, yeah, uh, peaceful drinks with a good boy. A good boy or a good bike, Miss Kate? Um, I can't read typo today, sorry. I could open the link, though. Let me take a look. Because this is kind of an informal. I was just doing something odd on Christmas Day. Oh, the G's with the fireplace and the dog. That's pretty clever. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to base my tomorrow off the stories of dead people. That's, mm, I think I can do better than that. I think the, uh, if I'm going to study dead people, it'd be people like Tesla. And Tesla actually introduced me to, to the fraud that Edison was. I had no idea. I grew up in public school, you know, and everything they told me turned out to be quite different than the truth. Like uh, Marconi. Marconi got sued for stealing it from um, Tesla, the radio. Tesla said, well, what I read of it. See, I don't know what Tesla said, but I know the results. And the results were Marconi patented Tesla's invention and got caught. There you go. And the Supreme Court supposedly ruled in Tesla's favor like in 1948, but I don't care about SCOTUS. But see, the, here's the times where they do come through. And what good does it do anybody? Nothing. We're still burning oil like a bunch of chimpanzees. Christmas <clears throat> or no Christmas. <laughs> I'd like to end it with a better thought than that, but nah. I'm going to cut the show down to one tonight for a lack of uh, lack of filler. <laughs> Don't my mind? I was hoping somebody come in, come on here. We could argue about something, but nobody did. So we're going to uh, just go through the lineup and say adios and happy ho-ho to one and all. And let's see, today is Tuesdays, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. We got Miss Mary, she's coming through on her Rocket Chair podcast. Grammy's Rocket Chair. And then after that on Friday, then you got Grim and Moose doing the Freaker's Ball. Then on Sat. Well, wait a minute. I forgot me. I'm going to try something with a, a more realistic tone for an hour on Thursday nights. Something link related where it will inspire the great minds of the realliberty.com chat to jump on the wire and ask me what the hell I think I'm talking about. <laughs> and on fr then that's Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I'll i announce the time, the day that I do the show. But I'm thinking of midnight my time, so it'll be in the evening your time. So it'll be like a news show, but without news. <laughs> well, what would you call it? Uh, an opinion program, something like that. Anyway, Dork Table Saturday, Sunday morning, we got Grimner with the Blues. We got Trivia, and then we got Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. And after that, we got this crazy show again. Next week, maybe we'll kidnap Vinny, because Vinny had Christmas stuff to do. And me, I've got Circle stuff to do. So I'm going to call it uh, call it an early show. But I want to say uh, thanks to uh, Grimner and Moose Girl and Chloe and Anti and whoever else hung around. You know, because I, I felt nostalgic that I'd do a little something bizarre on Christmas. And let you guys know, there's more to the um, there's more to the picture than meets the eye, and it goes for all of us. I'm not the only one that the state gave the shit ends of the stick to, but eh, I figured there's no harm in discussing why it's been many years. You know, I'm I'm over I'm over the anger issues <laughs> that that came from the states intervening in my personal business, but. They're going to bomb the snot out of Iran for you. So stick tight for that massacre. Should be coming up sometime after the new year. Anyway, Roger Wilco over and out.